my name is Craig Resnick. I'm coming to you today from the ARC Advisory Group. And we're going to uh, podcast today. We're going to talk about instilling confidence to operate for the future. I have two special guests today. Rashish Modi, who's the head of the monitoring and control business at Aviva. And John Krajewski, who's director of product management of HMI SCADA Solutions at Aviva. How, uh, how are you guys doing today? Great. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. For those who are not familiar with Aviva, could you both give us a brief introduction to Aviva and what each of your roles are with the company? Sure. So I'm definitely very excited about to give you an overview of Aviva full portfolio. And then we'll deep dive into specific segments in operations domain as well. So from Aviva perspective, we offer three key portfolio segments, engineering, operations, and performance. And it basically aligns with customer needs, activities, and enable them to achieve their strategic initiatives like Industry 4.0, digital transformation, connected workers, or improving efficiencies of throughput. So if I give you one by one performance side, it's all about making their supply chain very agile, making more optimized in and becoming critical to protecting their bottom line, you know, and how do you operate critical assets uh, more reliably and safely? That's a performance portfolio. From engineering perspective, it's focusing on lowering the total cost, time and risk in the big capital project. It starts with design to procure, to construct, fabricate all the different phases of engineering side and the operation side where that's where I belong into it, which is including more monitoring and control operations to ensure safety, performance, and the optimization of plants, sites, and it includes both industrial operation and infrastructure operation as well. And my role is I head uh, one of the business units at Aviva called monitoring and control. And that includes portfolio from Wonderware, portfolio from SciTech. These are all products are a part of this operations and monitor control portfolio. So products like InTouch, System Platform, Historian, MES, this is all part of this operations portfolio. Okay. How about you, John? Uh, so good morning, everybody. Or welcome. Uh, my name is John Krajewski. I am a director of product management. And in that role, what I'm doing is I'm working with a lot of our key stakeholders, both internal and external, whether they be end customers, system integrator partners, distributor partners, internal partners as well of ours. And we try to identify the market needs and then we ensure that our strategy aligns with those market needs. And then we, uh, my team works with our R&D organization to drive execution and ultimately then to take those products to market and, and ensure that that there's a common understanding and uh, marketing collateral and such. So I, I do the fun part of the job, I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. Uh, we we've all certainly been in this, uh, you know, certainly in a in a new world for all of us. You know, given this market dynamic, you know, with COVID nineteen, uh, the crazy fluctuations in oil prices. You know, how have your conversations changed with your customers in the last three to four months? Very very interesting because absolutely uh, everyone is uh, trying to adjust a new norm. You know, whether it's a uh, oil and gas pricing and the whole volatility vitality part of it, uh, supply chain priority. Uh, remote work enforce enablement. So if we look at this whole conversation under three dimensions, it's a people-centric, process-centric, or technology. For example, from people perspective, many of our customer staff is working collaboratively remotely. So how do we make it happen? How do we provide tool sets? How do we make all the providing uh, all our software, which is available and works more in the cloud uh, fashion? Processes side, customer wants to reduce cost and exposure into the projects, give them almost uh, real-time capabilities, uh, operations views, uh, visibility visualization, and technology perspective, all about uh, easy to consumptions, uh, deployment throughout the enterprise and give them a flexible commercial model. So it's all of these three things uh, playing a major role in, in current dynamics. You know, you know um, well, the combination of certainly attending your recent virtual conference and talking to some of your customers, I keep hearing this theme of, you know, confidence to operate for the future. And uh, a lot of it's coming around the edge to enterprise software. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure, I think excellent. And, and this is about achieving operational excellence in this changing world. I mean, and specifically now, I mean, it requires a visibility across full business. I mean, all the way from edge, the, the machines, the equipments, uh, small processes, all is running into your plant uh, or the enterprise, uh, the infrastructure operations. How do you make all information and decisions to make the right operations uh, at this right time? So the question is, we want to provide our edge portfolio, which include visualization, edge operation, edge analytics, edge intelligence. So entire portfolio of operation includes edge part, 
Then you go into the next part is a plan floor or command control center, or operation plan floor, which includes HMI, SCADA, supervisory, historian, uh, MES, workflow. These are all key components. How does each of them work with all these components and then provide customers a complete visibility within the plan? And the third component is across enterprise. How do I provide dashboard, reports, KPIs across all the way from uh, engineering tools to ad hoc users to unified operation solutions? So our portfolio of operation glues all the way from edge to enterprise. And then it, fundamentally, this release is based on four key pillars. One is connectivity and interoperability. We should be able to connect hundreds of devices. We should be able to go scale from 10, 20 IO points to millions of IO points. Uh, and can whether it's a on-premise, the hybrid, um, cloud, any of these combinations uh, possible in terms of architecture. Second pillar is all about collaboration. Can we provide customers set of tools so that they can collaborate better? They can collaborate partners. They collaborate with the SI uh, ecosystem. They can collaborate engineering and maintenance team or enterprise IT users. Third is all about providing visualization and, and situation awareness with a very simple upgradability. If I'm running an older, earlier version of software with a few clicks, can I upgrade it and take advantage of all the species? Can I make it very, very simple way to provide right information on right device with the right context to make right decisions? And the fourth pillar is all about flexibility in terms of licensing, in terms of architecture, in terms of uh, all the technical abilities can we provide the flexibility. So this is our edge to enterprise portfolio for a full operations domain is a very, very uh, exciting and we released that last quarter and it's been successfully migrated in many applications. You know, you know, in that context, you know, what do, what do you see as the challenges that industrial and infrastructure operations have, which are impacting the market right now? You know, as I mentioned earlier, a little bit about this uh, people, process and technology. But if you look at today, it, it's all about market dynamics in terms of today. Right. The customer looking for is, is remote operations, digital workforce. I mean, how do I provide all my workers information in real time basis with with the right context? Second part is all about my safeguarding my supply chain. This is becoming very important for food and beverage and CPG and pharmaceutical. For industrial operation, uh, you're talking about smart cities and, and many city operations. How do we provide information remotely so they can make sure that all the critical uh, operations continue to run flawlessly in, in major cities? Third thing about the demand shift. Because there's definitely consolidation happening. There's a new preference coming from from consumer choices versus making sure all the uh, uh, available uh, components and elements to the end user as much as possible. And always the capex and opex pressure that is absolutely in every day's discussion. So you can see this definitely shift in these challenges, and we recognize it. And our portfolio is adjusted and giving right value proposition to the right customer. You know. You know, you, you talk about some of the different challenges um, that your customers are facing. You know, how, how are your uh, how are these companies looking to address these types of challenges? So let me start with this. Uh, let's just start with digital workforce, right? Uh, how, we got so many different technologies coming up. You're talking about big data, AI, uh, AR, VR, XR, lots of different technology, IoT, cloud. So how do we take advantage of this technology in making the workforce more capable of making right decision with right context, right? So workforce enablement is absolutely number one challenge we want to solve that. How do we provide the skill set? How do we provide training environment so that best practices can be derived from one employee to other employee? Operations agility, can we provide information in such a manner so they can really look at very quickly and then identify issues. For example, situation awareness. We have a situation awareness library. So operator can see hours and hours of uh, information very easily and they can identify root cause pretty quickly. Third area is about, you're talking about predictive analytics. Some of the AI and machine learning plays a major role. So we are helping customers to identify some of the downtime tracking anomaly detection much more in advance and ahead than the, so that you can avoid some unscheduled downtime. So all these different technologies really help them to address some of these challenges right now. 
you know, one of the thing that's key, of course, for every customer is flexibility. And, you know, given today's market environment, you know, how important is it to have flexibility in operations, you know, now as well as into the future? You know, that, that plays actually a very big role uh, lately where how the lot of business models are shifting from CapEx to OpEx and, and flexibility of use it and then I want to pay what I use uh, kind of environment and consumer industry has been going very well in many, many places, whether it's music, it's movies, to e-commerce, everywhere it's been very prevalent. In industrial arena, it is absolutely, so we introduce an offering called Flex, Aviva Flex. It's a new way of commercial model where we have a amazing uh, software depth and breadth of our portfolio, starting operations, performance, engineering, you talk about edge to plant level to enterprise. We want to provide all these choices to customer and say, you can have access to all of this software very easily with the commercial where we put this uh, uh, flex model, which is flexible, which is simple, and which is very transformative. I mean, it can, customer can access all this emerging technology very easily and unlock that limitless possibilities and drive transformation. So if you want to use HMI, you can use from edge to enterprise any components you want. You want to use historian, you can edge historian, you can use cloud historian, you can do enterprise historian, you can use MES, you can put predictive analytics, all these pieces available to the customer. And they get the Viva Flex model and they can scale it how they want it. So it is becoming extremely successful in the last uh, 18 months. And we see a very good adoption here. And in fact, ARC is the one, it helped us to uh, launch this one last year. So it was very successful. So personally, thank you, Craig. Appreciate your help as well. You know. Well, that's uh, that's great, Rashish. I'm glad it's uh, it's worked out so well. You know, one of the other things we also hear about is uh, certainly with all the technologies like edge and artificial intelligence and cloud and and how the change that those technologies are driving. So do you see those technologies changing the way some of your customers are operating uh, going forward? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. And it's very interesting. And I joined this company almost 20 years ago, actually over 20 years ago at this point. And in that time, I've seen a couple of what I call technology inflection points, where there's a, you know, a large number of technologies that when come together, create a material shift. You know, in some of the past, we've seen these with networking or web technologies or even things like Active Directory, that when you bring them all together, people start operating very differently. And I think when you look at these technologies as a whole, you see a significant opportunity for disruptive change. Uh, we like to refer to this space as what we call unified operations, where the next major shift will be breaking down the silos. We spent many, many time with those previous infection points trying to break down those uh, islands of automation that we've seen in the past. And now as we look at what we're referring to is IT and OT convergence, we see it as much more than just an organizational shift. It doesn't mean that OT technology owners now report into the IT organization. Well, those things tend to happen, but it's going to be a material shift. And what happens when you bring all that data together? What happens when you're actually moving towards these unified operations? And what we believe we'll see over the next 20 years will be the efficiencies that will be gained. So when you're actually trying to make a decision, all of those critical impacts of your decision and all the critical pieces of information you need to understand in order to make those decisions, those are no longer separated out into different spaces, but they're all together. And what types of disruptive changes could occur in individual businesses when those types of capabilities are there? You know, you were talking a lot, John, about uh, disruptive changes, and which obviously brings us to, to market challenges that uh, your customers certainly have. And, and how is you, you know, being both a vendor and a partner, you know, have responded to your customers' current market challenges? You know, one of the first things we had to kind of do is recognize that there was an increased importance in our customers of being able to do just simple things, business continuity initially. And initially, the major challenge was how do I continue to operate when critical resources can't even come onto site? Or when they're on site, you're restricting their movements around the location. And bringing the thing, the information to the individual became much more important. And so what we did is we looked internally initially and we said, okay, there's two, there's two areas we want to act upon. We want to act upon and um, making sure it's easier for people to access the capabilities we have at present and invest in ensuring that we have stronger capabilities in this area. So in terms of that facilitating the access to our capabilities, we looked across our portfolio and we, we recognized that a lot of our cloud hosted capabilities were significantly important here because those were things that regardless whether or not you were on an internal network, a public network, they were facilitated access to all types of capabilities. So we looked around things like our insight capability, our insight offering, which allows us to host data and to be able to put it at the 
fingertips of everybody. This system, we actually made it uh, complimentary. So we originally have, uh, I think it's a 48 day trial access that we allowed. We extended that. We made it much more easy for people to just jump in and utilize it immediately to get going. We made it easier to access our remote technologies like InTouch Access Anywhere. We made those things complimentary in some cases so that we made it easier for our customers to be able to maintain their current business continuity because that's mission critical because so many of our customers are uh, providing quality of life services to us as a, uh, as a as a community first. And we also recognize that a lot of our customers need to be supported in, in how to use our offerings. So we looked at, you know, with distance learning, tip, most of our training capabilities, which were face-to-face, just weren't going to be possible. So we looked at our e-learning curriculum and we decided, let's just go ahead and make it all free. So we made our entire e-learning curriculum free to everybody, whether or not they're an existing customer or not, we just opened it up to everyone to make it free. So those were some of the key things we did to facilitate access to our existing capabilities, but we also doubled down. We said, well, what are we going to do in terms of our existing release train? So our release train are, are a number of key investments or products that we're taking in the market at a point in time. For our edge to enterprise release train, there was over 20 releases that we were coordinating and we emphasized this capability of putting information at the fingertips of people, whether or not they were on-premise or off-premise or wherever they are. And we did that across our portfolio. And across those things, we looked at how do we leverage web, mobile, and cloud capabilities in our edge product products, our HMI and SCADA solutions, our system platform capabilities with Insight. And we drove a lot of common capabilities, common technologies to make them interoperable and to connect them together. We called it enter- Edge to Enterprise and it really wasn't just a name, but it was really an intention. We want to ensure that from the edge to the enterprise, and this is a similar theme that we've had for many, many years. We used to call it sensor to boardroom, but it's still the same intention. We want to facilitate it, but now with the tools that we have and that are coming to bear today, we believe it's much more realized that it's ever been in the past. You know, you bring up the uh, Edge to Enterprise platform. I know Aviva uses an acronym called OMI, or Operations Management Interface. And how does OMI differ from, say, the traditional uh, HMI SCADA? You know, it's interesting. Um, uh, I was one of the people that was instructional in creating this uh, acronym, which stands for Operations Management Interface, because one of the things I started with and the products that I had been working with and passionate about for most of my career, we called them human machine interface. And that is exactly what they were designed initially to do. So I want to replace a control panel with a with a computing device that allows me to interact with a machine. A lot of times that would be a PLC and I'm sending values to registers or interacting with that PLC. And that was what it was designed and focused to do. So when we step back, we actually decided with our operations management interface to set off a different intention. And so when we first began designing it, even at the front, we were designing it. How would this become the center of an entire operation? How would this sit in there and deliver every capability that is necessary? And so we were looking to um, usher in what we refer to in some cases are the next phases of situational awareness. So situational awareness has been a big focus for us going back to a number of years, but initially situational awareness was focused on the data coming out of those plant floor pieces of equipment. But a lot of times that data will be coming out of other systems. So we built on top of system platform an entirely new user interface, which was also leveraging that standards-based development approach that comes with system platform and also covers all that traditional SCADA and HMI capability that we're well known for, but embraces a lot of the new technology trends, things like multi-touch or modern modern UI design with panels sliding in and things rearranging, being able to be, to be responsive so that you can target multiple form factors with your application with only one thing to do to, uh, to define. And then also looking at what we we're referring to as those earlier is that unifying those islands of information. How do we integrate data? and multiple types of data. So system platform for the last 15 plus years has been great about integrating data at a data level. I want to pull in a variable and then I want to model it into an object. System platform does that great. But one of the things we recognized was the next frontier was what I call visual data. And that visual data can come in a lot of forms, whether they're documents, web pages, interactive applications. And so we introduced a technology that we called OMI apps that allows you to drag and drop simple to put all of these systems together so that you can create one platform with single sign on and designed for contextual access. What contextual access means is that we talked to our customers and did a lot of interviews. Many of them would talk about 
15 or 20 applications that they were consistently using in the operation of their processes and that they were all 15 or 20 different applications accessed through different systems with different usernames and passwords. So we said, well, how do we bring these all together and how do we provide it into a plant floor environment where people may not have an, a complete understanding of all those data? And so this contextual access that we introduced allows me to simply say, this is the task at hand and it allows us to source all the information that's relevant to that person. So it's very easy. They don't have to go lurking for it. They don't have to be trained on all these information systems. Everything just kind of surfaces itself as necessary for the people to complete their tasks. So you asked me the question of how does it differ from human machine interface? It's really different. It covers all the traditional capabilities that HMI and SCADA has known to do, but we also added an entire frontier, an entire side of our solution that really focuses on how do I unify so many other data systems and do it around the same amount of time that would it have taken me to create a traditional SCADA application? Well, that sounds great. And one thing uh, it appears that OMI definitely delivers is a term at ARC we like to call single version of the truth and uh, and how important that is for uh, all manufacturers, as, especially today with needing the uh, needing to have that uh, real-time information that it takes to make uh, split decisions all the way from the factory floor up to the enterprise. So, uh, so I want to thank uh, Rashish and John. Thank you both for uh, being here today for our instilling confidence to operate for the future. And uh, this is uh, Craig Resnick coming to you from the ARC Advisory Group. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.